How's everyone going? Welcome back to another Comics 99A Model Railway review video. We're back on the desk again. So, um, quite a few done this, uh, being completed this year and being uploaded within the same year. So that's a uh, good to see that I'm actually getting some of these out. Um, because again, not again because um of the year it is centenary year. So we've got another one as part of the centenary year for Hornby. <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. So we've taken the um annoying plastic thing. It was actually pretty decent packaging, uh for the fact that it had to only be transferred about um six kilometers between my place and the shop, so and then all looking Britain, but whatever. So yeah, we can already have a product number, so and you would have seen the title so you would know what it is. We're just gonna get it out of this box. I think it's an extra packaging which I think they did, which is a bit different. Because it's not there's not what Hornby usually looks like it's been repackaged more or less, not um so, I'm just going to get it out of this. Anyhow, you were just seen by the title. Yes, it is a Hornby Terrier. Uh, Merton, part of the centenary range for, I think it's 1980s? No, sorry, 1990s um, range. It's the centenary for the 1990s range. So, just need to get this annoying paper wrapping out. Same sort of tissue paper that is usually inside the box, is now outside it. So... It's a little bit bigger than the normal Hornby boxes, which is not, uh, which uh, I know, understand why, because the box is actually quite a bit bigger, so uh, I'm trying to do this without destroying it too much, because it just creates a mess if I destroy it too much. I say that as I continue to destroy it, so what does that say? <laughs> but yeah, wow, it's a nice little big box for it. So it's the Terrier Merton from uh, uh, R3823. No side packaging, so it's just on the front. So yeah, um, I'll do those standard normal shots again. Standard normal stuff on the back. So it's a slipper, a piece of sleeve, and we get the. Um, I wish my light was so bright. Actually, I'll probably kill the light for a second. There we go. We can actually read the front now. So Merton Limited Edition Hornby, hundredth anniversary. So looks actually quite nice. Uh, opens like this. We get our little history stuff in the back again, so you will have that on the screen while I talk about it. Um, so yeah, it's just the standard stuff, same thing. On, again, same on, as on the website, same as what um, is seen uh, on the like the Smoky Joe one, but while talking about the Terriers. So foam, and we have our limited edition certificate authenticity number twenty three out of a thousand. <laughs> so another very very early model, which is nice. Uh, it has been creased though, which is oh well. <laughs> what can you do? And we have Merton inside the box, which is um, you know, foam surrounding her with the newer style Hornby packaging. So that's nice to see because I actually haven't gotten any of the Hornby stuff with the new packaging yet. Let's get it out. Smaller model. Yeah, she uses the 2019 tooling, uh, so it is it is a modern model, obviously, um, uh, compared to the original model. For, but yeah, and we have our safety instructions for the A1, A1X class terrier. So our standard, standing our running instructions, uh, standard lubrication, how to open it. And uses a six pin decoder, if I remember correctly, from what I saw on the website. So. That's going to be a fun little thing. Uh, probably won't be DCC. Nothing that I have it is, so push it down and let's move away. So, nice little casing for it. Slide off the... This is more normal with our Australian stuff now. Um, we get our little brake hoses. Uh, probably can't be bothered to put those on, honestly. Just open it up. Well, she is little. <laughs> About the same size as our... Uh, Nearly the same size as the um pugs. There we are. Nice little model, honestly. So let's get the uh, camera moved and let's get some shots of um. Uh, well, let's go in de uh, closer into it. Closer, uh, whatever. See you all in a moment. All right. So everything's now being set up finally. Uh, moving things around. 
Yeah, what a small little model. <laughs> Honestly, it, I think it's nearly as small as um, Smoky Joe. Uh, so, what that say? Yeah, no, it looks very, very nice of a little model. So, again, no, as normal, we're going first impressions. Very, very detailed little thing. Honestly, I'm kind of scared t uh, touching it. Um, the amount of things that could probably fall off and break on it is um, astounding. But yeah, so... Looks very very nice as a little thing. It's like it's got fully detailed cabin stuff like that. Uh for such a small model. Honestly, surprising what the amount of stuff that we can do. And this one does have glass, unlike Smokey Joe. Uh so I'm pretty sure it does anyways. Oh you will see a pop up now if I've got that wrong. Alright, so there we go. Finally got back in focus again. So yeah, no, it doesn't like these little things, uh not sure why compared to my older camera this one actually has a lot more problems than this one so yeah uh, again looks very very nice as a little engine 060 ST, uh, ST I think not sure 060 T at least I'm not sure about S um, something I realize I don't do much anymore is checking for sprung buffers uh, because I model Australian and most Australian models don't have buffers altogether so um, no sprung buffers on this one. It's uh, just molded. Uh, not molded. They are metal, but they're screwed in. So yeah, you can see all the little little pipe work and stuff. So it looks actually really really nice for a little terrier. Something which um, I probably honestly would have never got a part of the fleet uh, if it wasn't for the centenary year because I actually quite liked um, the way it looked. It was a cute little thing, and I wanted to add a part as part of um for the year. So yeah, so there's number number forty five Merton. Yeah, so I think that's probably uh, uses NEM couplers, standard um standard uh, standard modern shawling couplers. So uh, honestly, had a lot of problems with the NEMs, uh, but oh well. Probably I'm not going to change it because I need to keep it as original as possible. So yeah, I think that's probably enough for the uh, first impressions. Of a little bit longer than usual. Let's go and jump into a little bit of a history, and then let's go and take a nice close look. Alrighty. So you may notice that there's a slightly different voice for this recording. This is due to having to the recording having to be re-recorded because of a few technical glitches with the original recording. Anyhow, so the Terries were built between 1872 and 1880 uh, by the Brighton Works for the LB and SCR, the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway. A total of 50 of the class were built, with an initial six being built in 1872 and the uh, and the Further, 44 of the class being built from 1874. 17 of them were rebuilt as A1X classes, uh, locomotives, after a modification to the boiler and smoke box were completed. 15 of the class were, were given over to the BR service after Southern Railway and predominantly operated in the southern region for shunting duties due to their low classification of 0P. The retirement of the class began in 1901 with complete ret uh, retirement by 1964. Ten of the class have, have remained in preservation with eight of them being A1X classes and two of them being in their original condition. The first of the class was locomotive number 55, Stephanie, which is also the most popular of the class due to its history or as part of the Thomas and Friends franchise. Alright, here we go. Nice and close to the model. Really, really nice and close. Um, now the camera is actually working for me, so that's nice and brilliant. So, I'm going to start off at the front as usual. We can see that most of the parts there are actual real detail parts, which is uh, like the hook, the um, door darts, and all the handrails. They are actually um real parts and even the i don't know what those little things on the side of the um front is uh anyone knows pop those down below um again i'm not used to british stuff so yeah got our two tanks we've got our merton painted onto the side uh most of the uh terriers were all named after provinces uh not provinces uh what's it called towns and stuff of um and suburbs of uh what's it called of the uh, southern region of um Britain, uh, England so that's where most of their names came from anyways 
Uh, I'll get a better shot of the interior, which you'll see on the screen now. But very, very nicely detailed interior. We've got our coal bunker on the back with pretty decent looking coal compared to some of the other fake stuff around. This is actually pretty decent. Uh, obviously something you can do as future thing, put in pop coal. You've got your red um, uh, connecting rods. Uh, so this is an internal, internal piston drive locomotive. So the pistons and stuff are all within the engine, nothing on the exterior. So, well, a lot of the 030s usually had this um, 060s uh, with design like that. So, as I've realised. Coming through to the back, you got your... Uh, what they call it? Your air supply, air, uh, air, um, whatever it's called. <laughs> the things that's basically for the air brakes and stuff on this uh, on this side next to the cab. Pretty interesting place to have it though. Um, I know it is correct to the real one, but I mean, pretty interesting to compare to like our engines and stuff, where they would usually be either below the running board or towards the front of the engine, because they I've noticed that they. Do make a bit of noise, but I suppose it also makes it easy for maintenance in case something goes wrong with them. Uh, you've got your nice brass, um, no, not brass, but brass. Uh, 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 you've got your nice um, whistles, uh, separately fitted whistles. Uh, your dome with the air valve on top of it. So yeah, pretty nice looking model. I'm just going to uh, quickly cut the camera and move the camera up so we can see some of the details on top. Uh, she weighs, she's pretty light, honestly, so uh, we'll see what her pulling power is going to be like. The lining looks nice though, very, very nice. So, and you've got your handrails going straight down the smoke box, so uh, very, very detailed for such a little package. So, time to move the camera up and then, yeah, there we go, just move the camera up a little bit so we can take a better look at the details on top. Um, you can see your separate sealy fitted, um, well, what look like separately fitted, um, uh, water uh, uh, water caps for the um, water tanks. But yeah, so very, very nicely detailed little model. It would be a pain to put a lot of the uh, extra details on, seeing how small he is. But yeah, so anyhow, let's quickly, uh, let's just slowly pull the, pan the camera out. I think that should be enough for the uh, review side of it. I think the video is a little bit long as usual, as per, the uh, as per Smokey Joe. Let's jump over to the layout and let's see how she performs. I have High regards for the uh, from what I've seen from the videos of the newer mechanism terriers. So I have seen a few videos on the terriers already, not this particular one, but I've seen videos on the terriers themselves, and it seems like they're pretty nice models. Anyway, let's jump over to the layout uh, and let's take a look at how she runs. Alrighty, so we're back on the layout. Um, how much different having uh, actually doing this during the day? So yesterday, uh, this video is actually being shot during the day instead of being shot at night which most of the reviews are usually done. We've got our little terrier sitting at the front of the shot as usual. We're going to put it on the outer loop because, again, the outer loop is the only thing that's available and should have the lower radius. It's not that it really matters for such a small locomotive. Um, yeah, should pretty much function as usual. Let's firstly have no focus, so thank you camera. Alright, have the focus back for a little bit, so... Seems like a very smooth roller. A little bit noisy though, but that's probably because it's too new. So yeah, we'll get her running on her running in as usual. Um, get a few shots of her running and then get a train on her. Um, and I think we'll do a little strength test as well with them. Some... Thank the camera for being out of focus. A little strength test with maybe like the um, passenger stock, um, the five carriages I have sitting on the thing, see if we can handle this sort of thing. So yeah, let's get her rolling. She's fast at mid speed, so that's interesting.
Well, that's the end of another running in session. I just need to bring her up to somewhere which we can actually stop her. So she's just going past the platform. I have lost the controller. That's great. Let's call her to a stop. Stops quite abruptly, also starts quite abruptly, so that's um, a good, interesting little thing, but I suppose it might not help that the motor is little as ever. So, anyways, I think it's time that we stick a train onto it. Uh, not the test train. Actually, no, let's put let's test the strength of a first. I will have to go and get a conversion wagon, and then I might just stick it onto the freight um, thing which um, is blocking on the um, second loop, so while wow, the focus is uh, off the whole way, but oh well. So yeah, I think we'll do that. Uh, let's see if it can handle what kind of strength it can handle. Uh, realistically, in real life, they weren't very strong locomotives either. Uh, they were made for branch lines, they were made for little forward stock, but um, yeah, no, it's... Uh, it, when BR started using them, they started trying to put a lot bigger stock on them. I think they started to struggle a little bit, as a lot of the older Victorian designs did. So let's get a shunted. I realise that yes, it is Australian car wagons compared to um British engine, but um it's just a proof of concept. I think we, I will get something built on the other track and then we'll have our little movement as it goes along and shots those together. So let's get that, uh, let's get that put together. Alrighty, so there we go. We've we'll got a, tra a little train up behind her. It's yeah, it's a little bit longer than most of the other ones, which is going to be interesting. Um, pretty sure it should be able to handle it. Should be, mostly. Uh, yeah. So let's get her rolling. Um, you'll see if the if it doesn't handle it, that the wagons will slowly disappear. I've also been sorting out a lot of issues with this autofocus on this camera. The sun is rubbish on it when it comes to little stuff, so let's get her rolling.
Anyways, hopefully that's enough shots. Uh, I might get a few extras after the video, but uh, yeah, not a bad little model. Seeing that she's spent a lot of time in the box, I had to bring out my old video camera because there was the autofocus on this camera is just playing up all day. As you can easily tell, I'm still even having focus issues right now. So yeah, that's unfortunate. Anyhow, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little review video. No, uh, little <laughs> quotations. Uh, I don't, I do intend as my next review will probably be Australian, uh, so will be an Australian model from what I've planned anyway, so the next model will be Australian, um, uh, there will be a few more British ones coming out next year, but that, um, the next one should be Australian, so yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed joining me for another, uh, review video, I will see you next time.